Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. We have a special guest today talking about some super cool stuff. Assisted living in Texas it is a model that a lot of people have asked me about. A lot of people have huge hearts and know that uh, baby boomers need some options. Uh, so I look forward to having this conversation. Let's welcome Brett to the show. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. We have, excited a, to be here. we have some friends in common, uh, the one and only Bill Allen, who I put yeah. on the Mount Rushmore of investors. And I mean that with every word. So anytime he has a recommendation, I'm like, yes, please. So shout out Bill. Allen. Right. He's the man. Awesome. So, Thank you. Oh, absolutely. So Brett, we're going to talk a lot about assisted living, what you're doing, what your model is uh, at Platinum yeah. Resorts. But I, I, it's always interesting to go back to the beginning because you don't just start by building mansions for, you know, uh, baby boomers and, and think about assisted living. You often start your journey much earlier. I think you started your journey probably in 2014, if memory serves. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, you were, I'm going to guess flipping homes because we were kind of near the bottom of the market, but uh, tell us how you started. Yeah. I mean, honestly, from the, from the very beginning, I was waiting tables through college and it was just like, Man, there's got to be something better than this, right? <laughs> there's got to so be something better. My wife and I, both waiting tables for years, got graduated in like the economies and the crap are like, what are we supposed to do? And then someone's like, hey, let me just show you how, I, how to flip houses. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm into that. Yeah. And um, I mean, so we literally like we owned our own house. We fixed it up. Um, we literally by ourselves fixed it up. Like it took us two years, like doing one project at a time. Right. And then we're like, all right, well, let's sell this house and let's take the money. So we, we sold our house and we literally quit our jobs. And we had uh, two little girls at the time. Oh my god! I was goodness. like, all right, we are going all in because now we have no income and <laughs> we have some money that we have saved. And apparently we're going to start flipping houses. So, you know, again, so, we, we paid so, someone to teach us how to do it. So, so this is an amazing story. So when did you buy the house? Was it like really near the bottom of the market in 2012? Well, we or? bought in January of 11. Oh, even better. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was pretty much rock bottom. And what, uh, what area of the country? It was in uh, Orange County, California. Oh, come on. Could you imagine yeah. a bit? Orange County, if you guys don't know, is like the richy, richy, rich area. And I got to imagine prices were really depressed even in Orange County in 2011. Yeah, it, it was it was it was a great time to buy. I mean, again, we didn't hold it forever, right? We only held it for three years, just long enough to fix the house up. Yeah. And then we just had the itch. We had to quit our jobs. We hated what we were doing. Yeah. And, you know, so we sold the house and we're like, OK, let's figure this out. That's awesome. So the other thing you likely benefited from because it was your owner occupant house and you owned it for two years, yeah. you were able to walk away with 500 up to $500,000 tax free it's in the tax code. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We didn't make nearly that much, but it was enough to be able to like, okay, we can quit our server job. But that, but again, that was all tax free, right? A lot of people, when you make profits, yeah, exactly. you just sell a home, you have to pay taxes because it, this is again, something people need to look at two or three K loans, owner occupant stuff. The tax code says if you live there for two years as owner of occupied home and you're married, you can make up to 500 grand tax free. I have known people that's all they do every two years, every two, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's a strategy more people should do. So, okay, you get this lump of cash. You've now quit your server yeah. job. You've got at least one proof of concept that you can flip homes. Do you keep flipping in Orange County or do you, do you go, where, where, where do you branch out? Well, so we, we were marketing all over the place and, and we didn't really know what we were doing, right? We're literally brand new. So yeah. we just did, we got, we got what we could get. So honestly, like we lucked into our first one or two deals. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if we didn't get those first one or two deals, it was like, I don't know what we were going to do. We're going back to waiting tables because we blew our, all our money on, you know, just living. But mm -hmm. we, we literally just took action and just screwed it up and then took more action. And so we finally got lucky enough and or God blessed us or whatever it was that we got a couple deals. Mm -hmm. And um, we were like, okay, we started getting some confidence. We're like, I think we can actually do this. We can actually make a living doing this. Um, so, you know, the first year or so, I think we did like six or eight. And then we got to like 18 year two. And then we we're like, oh, let's pump this up. And we started hiring people and figuring out marketing and actually started building like an actual business. Okay. Um, so we, we brought on staff and then, we, you know, we got up to maybe about 50 houses a year that we were flipping. Um, we actually transitioned out of like that we were flipping in LA, transitioned over to Bakersfield. Mm. And I used to drive um, from Orange County, like I'd get up at like three in the morning and I would drive before LA traffic over the mountain oh, yeah. Yeah. Get into, to Bakersfield. Because again, at that time, like there was no competition there, right? Like everyone was in LA and there was like three people that were big dogs <laughs> flipping in Bakersfield. So I'm like, okay, 
I was instantly like a bigger fish in a smaller pond yeah. when I went over the mountain. So we did that for years and actually we still run a flipping company in Bakersfield. And now I'm in Texas and I've been here for years and we're still able to do it. That's amazing. Yeah. Again, I don't know if you know my story. I invest in Fresno, right? Which is oh, nice. you know, another 75 minutes if you kept going north. Yep. Um, right, Bakersfield is south of where, anyways, just the direction. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And you're right. Bakersfield's a, a market that, does, I mean, everybody's in LA. Mm-hmm. Very few are like, let's go over the hill, right? To Bakersfield. Yeah. So, um, so you're having a good time. You flipping company, it grows. When do you go to Texas? When do you leave California? And when do you go to Texas? So, we moved here um, like three years ago, so maybe like 19. Okay. But prior to that, you know, we're, we're running a, a pretty steady flipping company. We have a fantastic team, fantastic staff. We're making good money. We're able to support our family, save, save money, buy our rentals, do all that kind of stuff. And it, I was looking for what's next, right? Okay. I, I built my company. It, it's, pretty, it's pretty good, right? I have, I have a, a, a solid income here, but what do I do next? Now, mm-hmm. And I knew that, that flipping wasn't, my end all be all, right? I didn't want to have this big hundred, you know, house flipping company or some of these people who have these huge wholesaling companies. That wasn't for me. Right. Um, I wanted something different. So I'd been looking for years, waiting for the right opportunity. Okay. Um, and then I heard about assisted living and I heard about this residential style assisted living. You take a house and you can convert it and you can get a license and you can, you know, do that with people. I'm like, oh, well, that sounds super interesting, right? Like okay. I want to help people and I love, res- uh, you know, real estate. So maybe this is something I put together. Mm. So, um, we just, again, same kind of thing, just dove all in. I was in California. Um, you couldn't do a small assisted living in uh, a small assisted living in California, six beds. Right. Mm. But I knew that in Texas, you can have 16 beds. So I'm like, okay, well let's figure this out. So, um, mm. I visited Texas a few different times. And then all of a sudden I'm like, one of my trips, I'm like, Hey, I think I'm going to buy this house. I call my <laughs> wife. <laughs> so we ended up buying this house. Right? Yeah, exactly. So we're in California, all our family's there. And it's like, um, well, babe, I guess we're moving to Texas. It's time to go. <laughs> now, we, you know, we had wanted to move out of California regardless, right? Like we wanted something different for our family. So we had been waiting for some type of opportunity. It was like, okay, let's do this. Let's jump all in. Uh, so we loaded up the truck and we just moved, right? So then we get here to Texas and... I start learning more about the model, about, about the industry. Cause again, I have no idea, right? Like yeah. I know about flipping houses. I don't know anything about assisted living or about medical or about any of this kind of stuff. Right. So sure. we just kind of jumped into it. And then I start realizing like, okay, we bought this house. It had like six bedrooms. It had a garage, a bunch of other rooms. So I'm like, okay, I can convert this house to 10 bedrooms. Right. And I can have a 10 bedroom assisted living. And I know people that are doing that. And the, the, you know, that's a thing. Um, so then I start learning more and I start looking at the numbers and, you know, even if I'm charging, you know, $5,500 a month times 10 beds, it's 55 grand, which sounds great. But then you start filling in all the expenses and I'm not a nurse or have any kind of medical background. So if I want to hire somebody to do this, then now I start plugging in some of these numbers and then I go on Indeed. I'm like, oh yeah, they're, they're 70 to a hundred grand. There's <laughs> someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then uh, now we need staff at 24 hours a day times two plus food plus utilities. And I'm like, oh wow, my 55 grand just went all the way down. And now there's like 10 grand at the bottom of the day. And, and that's if I'm full. And then I'm thinking, well, what happens if I'm not full? What, I yeah. mean, these people do die. Like, what if I have two beds that are empty? And I'm like, well, now I went from 10 to like negative one. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, so I, I just, I had this feeling like this is just not for me. Like I didn't just move my family across the country to struggle and be trapped in a new business that I know nothing about. Okay. So then I'm just, I'm talking to my wife and we're trying to figure out like, how, how do we solve this problem? How do we come at this completely new? How do we do something totally different outside the box? Okay. And, um, and then I start just listing out like, okay, here's what assisted living is. Here's the industry, right? Everyone knows the most common option, you have these big box facilities, right? Yeah. Like the Brookdale's or like a hundred beds, they're everywhere. They're smelly, they're gross. They have this, this, this kind of corporate culture. They're, no one really wants to be there, but pretty much everyone goes there at the end of life, right? Yeah. So there's that. And then there's the opposite side, there's this residential model, right? And that was kind of what I was going after ignorantly. And then, you know, you start touring some of these places, you start talking to some operators. And again, there, you know, you, you have six beds, eight beds, 10 beds, but you can't, you can't have the numbers to have someone actually run the show, right? Mm-hmm. You can't have a chef. You can't have a salon. You can't have private rooms. Like it's just kind of, it's better than big box, but it's mm-hmm. still like 
It's not really what people want at the end of life. Got it. So then I'm like, well, gosh, what do I do here? How do I kind of solve this problem? And I thought I had this like aha moment. It was like, okay, well, I know that in Texas I can do 16. And if I can have 16 and I can offer all of the amenities that you can get with one of these big box facilities, then I should be able to charge what they charge. So if I'm charging five to six grand a month times 16, now I have like 90 plus thousand at the top of the uh, right. top line income, right? Yep. Now, if I have 90, 90 grand, now I can afford the actual director or the nurse to come run the show, right? right. I don't have to learn that skill set because I'm not that person. No. So now I can do that. Now I can, I can have 16 rooms. I can have a chef. I can have a salon. I can provide all the amenities that you can get what you need at the end of life from these big box. But then I can also bring the, the atmosphere, the culture, the location you want to be, right? People want to be in a home, not in a facility. Yes. So if I can have now this huge mansion style home that's been like redesigned like a boutique hotel, now I'm bringing in where people want to be and the amenities that they need, the medical uh, that they need at the end of life. And I'm like, okay, well, I think I can do this. And I just played and I played and I mixed around numbers and I talked to people for months as we were trying to like kind of carve out this niche and, and find this, this solution to this problem. Like, how do I give people all the services they want in the location they want? And so that's actually what we ended up doing. So we took that house we bought and we okay. did a huge addition, right? We, we, we made it 16 bedrooms, 16 bathrooms. We brought on a partner to run all the operations. So she has 22 years of um, big box director and memory care uh, experience. So she's running the whole show. I'm in my lane, she's in her lane, right? And we just made this home completely ADA, but completely like customized, customized and just beautiful. And it just feels peaceful and welcoming. So I want to play back what I think I heard there because um, I got some follow-up questions. So, Go for so, it. so you did, so you did buy this first house, which you thought would be 10 beds. You could, mm -hmm. you add to it, making it 16. So you add square footage and all of that. Correct. And 16 is an important number because that's the, I guess the maximum size you can have in Texas. Yes. Okay. For, for our type of license. What, what I, I'm just trying to run the numbers in my head quickly. So how, how many square foot did you add or have to add? We added about 3,000. We're about 6,300 square feet. So you added about rough and tough 50%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I guess the, the thing that I'm playing with, and again, I've never had any of these thoughts or ideas. This is why I love talking to new guests about new areas. Uh, is, is, what, would it be, what would it be like to build that thing from scratch? Just 16 beds, kind of you build it, you design it. I'm almost mm -hmm. envisioning like, five or six of these mansions around a courtyard, you know, center driveway kind of stuff. I mean, do you get to that level or is it always just cheaper to buy a big house and add what you need? No, uh, it's not. That's actually my, what I'm doing now. So oh. <laughs> we're, we're, we're taking the exact same model, right? It's like, okay, if this is great with one, then why can't I build out a neighborhood of these? Exactly. A so neighborhood. There you go. Yeah. That was my thought a couple of years ago. And um, again, so now we bought eight acres and we're going to be building four of them. Uh, and here's, okay. here's my thought. So there, we're building new construction, 16 beds, 17 bathrooms. They're about 10,000 square feet each. So they're, I definitely upped it wow. on the size and I'll, I'll come back to that on the numbers sure. and what that looks like at the end of the day. But um, here's my vision. And we're about to break ground on this is You'll, you'll see these, they're, they're, they're throughout Texas where you have two of them next door to each other, but they're really just like facilities, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in Texas, you have these big boxes and that's 17 beds or more, and then 16 beds or less is a small, small uh, facility. So people are just building these new construction 16s, but they still look and feel and act like a facility, okay. right? So that's not what I wanted. You drive up and there's a parking lot, there's the red curb, and it's like, okay, well, I'm just at another facility, yeah. it's just smaller. Yeah. I so I didn't you. want that, right? Yeah. Like, how do I take this home model, this this elegant um, luxury ho mansion of a of a home, and and how do I add more room together? Well, I don't put a parking lot in the middle, right? I made it its own private road. So you turn uh, in, you have like this big like green belt where it's like kind of like an HOA neighbor yeah. HOA part, and then there's just four big ten thousand square foot homes, but they're not the same, right? They're yeah. the same on the interior, uh, but the exterior, right? I got metal roof, I got comp roof, I got shingle, uh, I got siding, I got Genius. I got stone, right? So they're, it looks like the same custom like builder built all four of them, but they look mm -hmm. like next door neighbors. So it means there's no parking lot in the front, right? Okay. They have a front yard, they have a driveway, they have a mailbox, all the staff parking is in the back. There's no yes. red curb. 
So you're going to drive in, like aside from the sign that's going to say, you know, Platinum Resort, um, a, a boutique neighborhood, aside from that, you have no idea, right? It's just going to look like these big old houses. It's like, who built this? Like, I want to live here. Damn, I want to live there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so 10, th- like, are, I'm get again, these are just all just wild ass guesses. I, I'm guessing every room's a, what I would call a suite. Yeah, they're, they're larger size. Um, and, and part of the reason we, we have to size on the rooms is because if at the end of the day, if I can charge an extra $750 a month for a bigger room, right. With a private bath, a private shower, yeah, of course. now that's 750 that's times 16. Yeah. Right. So I'm bringing in like 12 grand of extra income. Now, yeah. what are my expenses though? Right. My expenses, my caregivers are the same. My yeah. food is the same. My yeah. utilities are slightly higher, but pretty negligible. The only thing that's different is my mortgage, my taxes and my, and yeah. Uh, my, yeah. So yeah. I can bring in an extra 12 grand and have an extra two grand in expenses and go from making 30 grand a month to making 40 grand a month. There you go. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, and again, just weird, weird questions coming in my mind. Are, do you have to do single story or can you, yeah. you do? You do now, do you have to No, but um, yes, I'm Otherwise, sure doing single story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to deal with elevators and the code for stairs and stuff. It's just, it, yeah, it's I, not, it's I would really think not one practical. Story. I would, again, it's Texas. So dirt's available, right? It's not like There's New a York lot of city. Land. Yeah. It's not like New York city mm-hmm. where you have to go up. Okay. So single story, damn, 10,000 square foot. So eight acres, four buildings. Is it, are they kind of spread out? Like there's two, I guess it's two acres mm. per building. Yeah. There's a lot of room. So it, it almost, my intention is there, there's literally 55 feet between each house. So my intention is that they, they look like houses, right? Yeah, like you, you actually have a next door neighbor. They're not right next to each other. A lot of times you'll see two buildings and they have a little, little like patio yeah. between them. So you can walk between the two, but you walk, you drive up and you're like, Oh, it's a facility. Yeah, like yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. want a facility, right? I wanted an actual home that people can live in. So you, a, a home has, has a street, it has a driveway, it has a mailbox, it has a front yard, it has next door neighbors and a backyard fence. So all of those things, right? I just make it a really big home, mm-hmm. 55 feet away from each other. And then on the other side of the road, um, again, because I have eight acres, I have a lot of land. So I have like this whole kind of community area where I have a big pavilion, I have the garden, mm. Um, again, they can just kind of take everybody out there and, and, um, and hang out with family. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, I don't know what it costs to build in Texas, uh, just a normal home. I'm going to guess, I don't know, 150, 180 bucks a square foot, just a wild guess. I'm sure. guessing given you're building this and you have to do ADA and, and, it, and you're probably upping the quality and it's not your standard build, you're probably 50, 60% higher than a traditional build. I'm just guessing. Um, 50, 60, I think 50, 60% is probably a little high. I would say probably maybe 30%. Okay, you do right. have to have the fire sprinklers. You have to have the alarm. You may want to put in like magnet locks, things like sure. that. But otherwise it's pretty much the same. Okay. Um, I, I didn't you know. You just ADA doors and ADA size turning radius and stuff like that. It's, it's not a huge difference. Okay. So not a lot. I, I didn't know. I didn't know if all that extra ADA yeah. stuff added layers and layers of costs. Okay. Yeah. No. So if you're thinking 150 to 180, I, I, w- I would say it's safe to be say to say like 200 as an average. Okay. Per square All right. Foot. So a little bit more, but not crazy. Cause again, I'm just going back to, you know, if you're adding an extra 700 square feet that, you know, that's again, that's why you said the mortgage goes up because your building costs go up. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, damn, this is so, so, so where do you go with this? This seems kind of repeatable. It's super repeatable. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Again, we we are all in on this concept. We are continuing to build this, and the numbers are super strong. Um, what I really like about it, and why it is repeatable for me in in, in my niche as a real estate investor, mm-hmm. is that now um, because we are charging competitive with what big box is, I can now bring in either a partner, an operating partner, right. or I can hire a director, or I can hire a nurse. And as we build a neighborhood, I can I can hire multiple people at like six figures to run the show. Exactly. Now that is important for me because I'm a real estate person and I'm not a medical person yeah. and I don't want to learn that. Yeah, no, right? exactly. So yeah. I knew going into this, okay, I can find someone to run the, to run the show for me because the numbers allow me to do it. Yeah. So that's, what's super important about this niche versus a, a, um, a residential style assisted living, right? Yeah. If you got eight beds, you just can't afford that. And that's, again, yeah. people are, are, are scaling that they're doing four or five of them and you're just kind of trapped in your business. Yep. Right. Like no. staffing is an issue right now nationwide in any type of industry. Yeah. Totally so, yeah. 
if you if you're trapped there doing that running the show when people are calling out sick and doing that kind of stuff you're stuck but in this model you can have multiple people who are the best of the best you can pull out of the corporate world for them to run the show and i can be in my lane they can be in their lane and that allows me to scale this this what we're doing here yeah because again 16 times four you're at 64 units in this in this uh uh, platinum resort mm -hmm. community do, do you envision again the next one being kind of like around the corner you want to you want to get you know up to 200 kind of beds in a driving distance or walking distance or what are you, what are you thinking um well so we have all we have, we're gonna have five of these right 80 beds oh. within our, our okay. city here in, in georgetown okay. so we're with, with those four plus the one we already have oh god right, so we'll okay. have 80 beds here so i we're good in this area right like so there's, there's so many areas in Texas that are perfect for this. Um, so whether it be, you know, outside of, of Houston, really everything around here is exploding. Mm -hmm. And there's so much opportunity to do it kind of on the fringes, on the outskirts where all the new developments coming in. So we probably, probably move, you know, outskirts of Houston, outskirts of San Antonio. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of places that I'm eyeing that are just fantastic opportunities. I like it. So I think I failed. We, we talked about moving to Texas, but Texas is a big state. Where, where are we? Dallas, Austin, where are we? I'm in, I'm north of Austin. I'm in okay. Georgetown, about in 30 Georgetown. minutes north. All right. You did say that. I didn't know where Georgetown was. So <laughs> Yeah, no, there's no worries. <laughs> so uh, this is a lot of fun. I, I definitely know why Bill got us connected. It's Bill Allen, you know, top uh, Mount Rushmore investors. What uh, what can my community, like if my community wanted to reach out, ask questions, how do they follow you, how do they get a part of this? What's going on? How, what um, How do you want people to get a part of this? Yeah, anybody who's interested, I love talking about this stuff. I'm happy to share what we're doing. Um, we are creating a, a, a small mastermind here in Texas. Where we're showing people how to do this uh, on, a, on a kind of step-by-step -step level. But if you're not in Texas or you're not interested, just shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to talk about this kind of stuff. So my email is brett at platinumresortassistedliving.com or just find me on Facebook and you can DM me. There you go. Again, this is a lot of fun. Do you, do you know, again, if you don't know, it's totally cool, but I want to ask. So you talked about California being, I think you said six and Texas is 16. Do you know others mm -hmm. are there is 16 is Texas kind of like the top meaning most beds or do you know you may not know. Um yeah the, there there are there are maybe about a dozen other states and I couldn't list them all off for you but I know Florida, Ohio, uh, I think Louisiana, a few other places where you can definitely do this model. Okay. Um there are definitely states where you can't, right? But um yeah. and again you can have a small assisted living but you can't have what we're doing because you can't afford it. Yeah, it, right, the so numbers that, don't work. It's all about the numbers. Yeah, so it's, yeah, this is amazing stuff. Again, you're you're. It's amazing to see what you've done. You've gone from just flipping a you know uh, your first fixer upper with your wife after three years to flipping mm. a bunch of homes to going to Bakersfield to you know finding an itch and you're you're solving real needs, but you're still feeding your real estate need. That's 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 fun. That's amazing. It is fun. Yeah, I wanted bigger problems. I wanted a bigger challenge, and you know, again, that's kind of why I uh, I moved. I, I was searching for this, right? But it, yeah. what I love about what we do in this industry is I'm still flipping houses. I still run my company in Bakersfield, yeah. right? So now I'm able to do all of that stuff, but I'm able to, to go after these big products that are fun, that are kind of life-changing for me and my family yeah. and, and have that steady income behind me from the rentals and the flipping and the wholesaling. So uh, I guess one final, so have you broken ground on these four yet? No, no, we're looking to break ground uh, this summer. Okay, and then how long is the build out, do you think? I, we should be done uh, a year from now, probably probably three months before we can break ground, another nine months to, to finish. There you go. This is going to be fun to watch. I look forward to following you on Facebook, see what's going on. Uh, Brett, where Absolutely. one more time, where can people find you? Your email, I guess? Uh, email me at brettshotcavis at platinumresortassistedliving.com or brettshotcavis. Find me on Facebook. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. You are welcome.